Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the first derivative test. And the first derivative test is a method that we can use to help us locate relative extrema on a function. So if you're not familiar with extrema and you're not familiar with increasing and decreasing functions, I would recommend that you check out those lessons first before you take on the first derivative test because we're going to be using those concepts a lot here. And so if we look at these four different types of curves I have here, these are four different behaviors that you might find on a function where we can observe some things about relative extrema. Now, when we first discussed relative extrema, we noted how relative extrema will always occur at critical values. Now, that doesn't mean that every critical value is a relative min or a relative max, but when there is a relative min or max, it is a critical value. And a critical value is a point on a function such as this one right here, where the slope is zero. Right, if I were to draw a tangent line at this point, the slope of that line would be zero. And so this is an example of a critical point, and so would the rest of these four points on these graphs. And so let's look at what happens at each one of these critical points for each of these types of functions. And so if we look at this first one here, our function starts by increasing, and then at that critical value, it switches to decreasing. And this is what we would call a relative maximum, right? Because this is the highest point in the relative area, right? Out of all the points on this graph, this is the highest point, so we call it a relative maximum. And if we go back to what I said, how this was increasing and then decreasing, notice that that would mean that the slope is positive leading up to a relative max, and then the slope is negative leaving the relative max. And remember that the first derivative represents the slope, so we could say that when the slope, or the first derivative, starts out positive and then switches to negative, we have a relative max. And so then if we look at this graph here, our function starts by decreasing, and then it increases after that critical value. And so we would call this point a relative minimum. And that's because all the values around this point are higher than this point, right? If we pick any other value along this function, it's going to have a greater y value than this point. This is the lowest point in this general area, so it's a relative minimum. And notice here that the slope is going to be negative leading up to that point, and then it's going to be positive as it leaves that point. And so we have the opposite situation over here that we had over here for our relative max. And so in this case, we're going from a slope that is negative to a slope that is positive. And so when you see the slope change from negative to positive, you have a relative minimum. And so then how about these two functions? What's going on here? Well, we also have critical values here where the slope would be zero at them. But in the case of our first graph, the slope is positive up until the critical point, and then it is positive afterwards. So we're going from a positive slope to a positive slope. And then for this one, we're going from a negative slope to another negative slope. The function is decreasing the entire time, as opposed to our previous one where it was increasing the entire time. So now we have a negative slope that changes to a negative slope. And in each case here, neither of these critical values are going to be a relative min or a relative max, right? This point is not the lowest point or the highest point in this area. There are higher points in this direction and lower points in this direction. And the same is true for this point. There are higher points in this direction and lower points in this direction. So these two critical values are not relative extrema. And so what we learn here is if we look at the sign of our slope, or if we look to see if our function is increasing or decreasing, then we can tell if we have a relative maximum or a relative minimum, or no relative extrema at all at a critical value on a function. If it goes from positive to negative, or from increasing to decreasing, we have a relative max. And if it goes from negative to positive, or from decreasing to increasing, we have a relative min. If it doesn't change, if it just goes from positive to positive, or from negative to negative, it's not a relative extrema at all. And so this is where finding intervals on our function, where our function is increasing or decreasing, is going to become very handy. And so this leads us to our first derivative test, where we're going to use what we just learned to find relative extrema on different functions. Let's take a look at the first derivative test. So here's the basic outline of the first derivative test, and we already went over how we're going to use it, but I wanted to write it out a little more formally in case you were interested in seeing the definition. But essentially what it says is if we let C be a critical point of a function that is continuous on an open interval containing C, and if F is differentiable on that interval, except maybe at the point C, and we'll look at that in one of our examples later, then we can follow the three rules. If the derivative of our function or the slope changes from negative to positive, at that critical value, 
then our function has a relative min at the point where that critical value lies, right? We have c, and then the y value for that value of c if we were to plug it into our function. And then if the derivative or the slope changes from positive to negative at that critical value, then we have a relative max on the function at that point. And then finally, if our slope is positive or negative on both sides of our critical value, then there is neither a relative min or relative max. And we already covered that on a previous page where we looked at it practically. And so that's the definition of the first derivative test, but now let's go into the application and let's actually use it to find relative extrema for a function. So here we have the function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 12x, and we want to use the first derivative test to identify all relative extrema for that function. And so what we're going to do is we're first going to find those critical values where we might have relative min or relative maxes. And so in order to find that, we need to take the derivative of our function and set it equal to zero because critical values are just the points on our function where the slope is zero. And so if we take the derivative, we'll have f prime of x is equal to 6x squared plus 6x minus 12, right? And that's just using the power rule for each one of these terms. And so then if we set this derivative equal to zero, we'll have that zero is equal to 6x squared plus 6x minus 12. And then we wanna solve for x. And so in this case, I see a common factor of six in each of our terms that I'm gonna pull out, and that's gonna make it easier to factor. So we'll have zero equals six times x squared plus x minus two. And now we're gonna to wanna to factor this quadratic right here so we can find our solutions for x. And so to factor this, since our coefficient of our x squared term is one, there's a really nice trick that we can use to factor this quickly, and that's to ask ourselves, what two factors of negative two added together get you the coefficient of our middle term, which is going to be one in this case, because we just have positive x. Well, negative one times positive two will get you negative two, and negative one plus positive two is going to be positive one. And so we found our factors, and so we can say that zero is equal to six times x minus one times x plus two. Right, we said negative one times two is negative two, and then two plus negative one is positive one. And so that allowed us to factor that equation. And so now we can solve for x. We'll have x minus one is equal to zero and x plus two is equal to zero. And so we'll get that x equals one and x equals negative two. And so these are going to be our two critical values for this function where the slope is zero. And so let's draw a number line here and that's gonna help us determine where our function is increasing and decreasing so that we can see where it's changing and determine if either of these critical values are the location of a relative min or a relative max. And so here's our number line and we're gonna have to label two points on it. We're gonna have negative two and then we're gonna have one. Just think of this number line as the x axis. And so what this number line tells us is we have three different intervals from negative infinity to negative two, from negative two to one and from one to infinity where we can test to see if the function is increasing or decreasing, and then we can determine where we have the relative mins and maxes. And so I'll write down our three intervals that we just found. So we have from negative infinity to negative two, and then we have from negative two to one, and then from one to infinity. So for each one of these intervals, we are going to test to see if the function is increasing or decreasing by testing a value between the endpoints of our interval and see if the slope is positive or negative by plugging in that value into our first derivative. So we'll start with this first interval here and I'll choose to test the value of negative three. So we'll have f prime of negative three and we'll plug negative three into our derivative here. In fact, I'm gonna to choose to plug it into this form of the derivative because it's gonna be a little easier to evaluate. So we'll have six, times negative three minus one times negative three plus two. And so negative three minus one would be negative four. And so negative four times six would be negative 24. And then negative three plus two is negative one. So negative one times negative 24 would be positive 24. And so that will be the answer to this. And that tells us that our slope is positive at that point on this interval. And so our function is increasing on that interval. And so we can label that with a plus because our slope is positive for that interval. So now let's work on our next interval here from negative two to one. Once again, we'll pick a value between our endpoints. I'm gonna pick zero and we're gonna plug that into our derivative. And so if we plug zero into this, we'll have zero here and zero here because anything times zero is zero and we'll just be left with negative 12. So we'll have negative 12, which is a negative slope. And so that means that our function is decreasing on that interval and we can write a negative there on our number line. 
And now let's test our final interval here. And so I have f prime of some value between one and infinity, and I'm gonna pick two. Again, I don't think I really stressed this, but you don't have to pick the same values I'm picking here. I'm just picking values that I want to pick. You can pick any value between negative infinity and negative two, or any value between negative two and one, or any value between one and infinity. Doesn't matter. As long as it's between your two endpoints, you can pick that value. And so I picked two for this interval. And if we plug two in, we'll have six times two minus one times two plus two. And again, that's me plugging that value of two into this form of our derivative. And so two minus one is one, so one times six is six, and then two plus two is four, so four times six is 24. So then we will also have 24, or positive 24, for that value as well. And so that means that our slope is positive, and our function is going to be increasing on that interval, so we can label that with a plus. And so now what we found is that around our critical values, our function goes from having a positive slope to a negative slope and then back to a positive slope. So around negative two, we are going from positive to negative. And so this is where the first derivative test comes into play. When your first derivative or your slope changes from positive to negative, that critical value is a relative maximum. And then for one, we're going from a negative slope to a positive slope, which means we're going to have a relative minimum. And if you're having trouble remembering which way is which relative extrema, just remember it like this. If you're starting out positive, it's going to be a max. Think positive max. And then if you start with negative and move to positive, think of that as negative minimum, right? A minimum would be smaller, so you can think of it as negative. That's the way you can think about it. However it starts, that's the type of relative extrema you're gonna have. You start positive, it's gonna be a max, and if it starts negative, it'll be a min. Hopefully that helps you kind of think about how to determine which is which. All right, so then we know that at x equals one, we're going to have a relative min, and at x equals negative two, we're gonna have a relative max. But now when we give our points, right, when we give our relative min and our relative max, we want to give the full coordinate point. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug these values into our original function to figure out what their y values would be so we can give out the full point. And so if we did that, we'd have f of one, we'll start with our value of x equals one here, and that's gonna be equal to two times one cubed plus three times one squared minus 12 times one, and that's gonna be equal to two plus three minus 12. So two plus three is five, and then minus 12 will give us negative seven. And then if we check our other value of x, we'll have f of negative two, and that's gonna be equal to two times negative two cubed plus three times negative two squared minus 12 times negative two. And that'll be equal to two times negative eight plus three times four minus, or actually plus 24. And so then we're gonna have two times negative eight, so that's gonna be negative 16 plus three times four, which is 12. So we have negative 16 plus 12, and so that's going to give us negative four, and a negative four plus 24 is just going to be 20, and so this is equal to 20. And so then our two points are going to be one, negative seven, and that is our relative min, and negative two, 20, which is going to be our relative max. And so this would be the final answer to this problem. We found the relative extrema for this function using the first derivative test. We found one relative min and one relative max. Let's look at another example. So here we wanna use the first derivative test again to find all the relative extrema for this function. And we have f of x equals x cubed plus one. So just like we started the last one, we're gonna start by finding our critical values where our slope is zero. So we'll start by taking the derivative and f prime of x is going to be equal to three x squared. That's the derivative of x cubed and then a derivative of one is zero, so I'm not gonna bother to write that. And then if we set our derivative equal to zero, we can find our critical values. So we have zero equals three x squared, and if we divide both sides by three, we'll have zero equals x squared, and then if we take the square root of both sides, we'll find that x is equal to zero. And so that's going to be our only critical value for this function. And so then if we draw our number line, we're only gonna have one point that we need to label here, and that's gonna be zero. So that's our only critical value for this function. And so that means we're gonna have two different intervals to test to see where our function is increasing or decreasing to help us determine if this is a relative extrema. And if it is, whether it's a relative min or a relative max. And so our two intervals are gonna be from negative infinity to zero, and then from zero to infinity, right? If you're thinking of this as the x-axis, we're looking at all the negative values up until zero, so negative infinity to zero, and then from zero 
to infinity, all the positive values of x. So zero to infinity. And so then we'll pick a value between negative infinity and zero. I'm gonna pick negative one, and we're gonna plug that into our derivative to see if the slope is positive or negative. So negative one plugged into our derivative here will give us negative one squared, which is one times three. So we're gonna have three, and that's a positive slope. So our function is increasing on that interval. So we'll add a little plus there on our number line. And then if we test a value between zero and infinity, I'm gonna pick positive one. So we'll have f prime of one, and that's gonna be equal to three times one squared, which is also just going to be three, which is also a positive slope. So our function is increasing on that interval, and so we also have a plus on that part of our number line. And so what we find here is that around our critical value of zero, the sign of the slope of the function is not changing. It goes from positive to positive. The function continues to increase after that critical value. It starts out increasing and continues to increase. And so in this case, we do not have any relative extrema because the sign of the slope does not change around the critical value. It is positive on both sides. And so in this case, we have no relative extrema. And so that would be the answer to this particular problem. Let's look at one more final example for this lesson. So finally, we wanna use the first derivative test to find all the relative extrema for the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus one. And so we wanna start by finding our critical values for our function. Now, typically we would take the derivative and then set it equal to zero and solve for x, but that's actually not gonna be necessary in this case, because if you remember, critical values are also values on functions where the function is not differentiable. And so what do we know about the absolute value function? Well, we know that if we were to graph it, no matter what is inside those absolute value bars, if we were to graph the absolute value function, it's going to have this V-like structure where it has a point of non-differentiability. The function is not differentiable at that point because of this sharp point where the slope doesn't exist. In fact, I actually just drew this function right here because what you're gonna find is if you set what's inside your absolute value bars equal to zero, you will find the vertex of your function, which also happens to be the point of non-differentiability, right? So if we take X minus one equals zero and solve for X, we'll have X equals one. And so in this case, x equals one is our point of non-differentiability on this function, which would also be the vertex of the graph. And so we have this V shape and our point of non-differentiability is at x equals one. And that's actually a critical value on our function. And so now what we can do is we can draw our number line and label that one critical value that we have. And so we only have two intervals to look at. We have all the values from negative infinity to one and then from one to infinity. And so I'll write those two down. We'll have negative infinity to one, and then from one to positive infinity. And then we would wanna test values on our derivative to find the slope if it was positive or negative. But in this case, we didn't take the derivative of this function to find our critical value. We just used what we knew about absolute value functions to find our critical value. So in this case, we're just gonna use the graph to figure out whether the function is increasing or decreasing, or if the slope is positive or negative. And so in this case, if we look at this graph here, our slope is negative or our function is decreasing up until that critical value, and then it is increasing afterwards. And so what we find is that it starts out decreasing and then ends increasing. And so we would have minus and plus on our number line there, which tells us that around a value of x equals one, our function is changing from decreasing to increasing, which would make this value a relative minimum, right? Because we started out with a negative slope. And you could also just look at the graph and see that, well, that point is lower than all the rest of the other points. So clearly it's going to be a relative minimum. And so then we know that the value of x equals one is going to be a relative minimum. And so then we just wanna get our y value so that we have the full point. So if we plug one into our function, we'll have one minus one, and then the absolute value of zero is zero. And so our final point is going to be one zero, and that is going to be a relative minimum. And so that is the final answer to this problem using the first derivative test. And so hopefully this gave you a good idea of how sometimes critical values are not always going to be found just from setting your derivative equal to zero. So always look out for points on a function where it's not going to be differentiable because those are also going to be critical values. And so that's all I had for this lesson. Hopefully you found it to be helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions and you wanna see some more examples, you can check out the example video that I will have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. And so you can check those out, but that's all I have for now. So I will see you next time.